come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin, Colin. (laughs) Yes, Sean, What did we watch tonight? (laughs) We watched Wicked, Wicked. Wicked, Wicked. From the year. Uh, 1973. Okay. 1973, directed by... Uh, Richard Bear? Okay. Or Barr. B-A-R-E. Bear. Bear? Do we know? I don't know him from anything. Barre. Barre. (laughs) Barre. (laughs) Richard Barre. Could be. I mean, who knows? I don't know. Eh, I know. Do we know this guy? No. No. Awesome. (laughs) So, podcast over. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. Colin, how did you come across this movie? You know, that's what I I remember. What what year is this movie? Uh, 1973. 73, okay. Okay, so usually we pick movies that the listeners can follow along with. Mm -hmm. Sure. And uh, so I should give it to you right up front. The only two ways that I know, three ways, there's three ways you can see this movie. You can get it on DVD from Warner Archive if you order from them directly. You can inherit um, it from Barre. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, you can watch it on the uh, Internet uh, Archive database okay. or the Internet Archive, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Sure. There is a copy there. And uh, thank you to our listeners for pointing that out because I didn't know that going into this. Oh. I like, hey, you can't even find it. Uh, oh, but they found for, it. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. paying attention. Yep. Listeners. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for whoever decided to. Um, uh, archive a copy of yeah. this movie, or you can see it on Turner Classic Movies. Yeah, they Apparently, tried to, it makes they tried to a delete all of MTV it. history, but they have this on yeah, file. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, right? I love that they're wiping it, like MTV archives as we speak. But yeah, no, don't worry. Wicked Wicked is the cockroach of archival yeah. storage Why? media. What kind exists. of storage space do you need that you have to wipe out MTV? Like, well, I mean, if they want to get rid of the the ridiculousness servers. That'll free that up gigs just, and yeah. gigs and gigs of space. Yeah, exactly. Just you know, like, well, that's yeah. the money maker. Yeah. They can't. In the iPhone storage of MTV, just, <laughs> just delete rid- <laughs> ridiculousness <laughs> and you're good. Got, frees up a lot of space. Yeah, frees up yeah. all your space. That's like yep. getting rid of all your photos. Yep, you're mm-hmm. gone. Well, as long as they have room for the Warner Archive is like an interesting, like they, uh, you know, Warner Brothers obviously had their own uh, DVD label, but they right. would there were Big certain company. movies that they're like. We know nobody. There's not really right. a big clamoring demand for this. <laughs> We're just going to hold on until somebody maybe requests it. Yeah, but they would transfer them to video. I mean, this one hasn't been restored at all. It's basically like, okay, we ran the print. Yeah. We captured it. If anybody wants it, they can have it. Um, I think I heard about it either through at one point, because um, I can't actually remember specifically. Mm-hmm. I know that, you know, obviously you read cinema books somewhere along the line there's a mention of a movie and you go like oh that seems weird nod and so i'll go you know check it out mm-hmm. or i used to watch um like the, i get these trailer reels and just like oh, yeah. watch we all watched, these we yeah. watched many oh, of those yeah. down here yeah mm-hmm. i this think feels maybe like it might have been one where you're like what mm-hmm. do over so the big did that guy just cannibal out of a window <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is this movie uh, well, this is the first uh, motion picture that is uh, filmed or presented in the magic of anamorphic duo vision. Is it the last? No. Okay. I, that was going to be my question. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Well, and we should. So, okay. so what is duo vision? Split screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> picture in picture. Yeah. Two monitors. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it did feel like I was sitting at my work setup. It, yeah. It a like little bit. I was like, oh, God, here we go. Like Two monitors. Yeah. Microsoft Teams in the one window and yep. fucking <laughs> <laughs> Illustrator in the other. Yeah. Program in the yeah, next yeah. One. Yep. So finally, this movie has reached a generation of film viewers who can sense. actually pay attention to both screens at the same time. Yeah, I can. I don't, I don't love to, to, but I can. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Optimal. I will say at work, when I have to pay attention to both screens, I get real annoyed with Teams chat real quick. I There's li- always someone popping off about some nonsense that you don't need, and it's like you're distracting. My reaction when I'm working is literally, oh, fuck off. Yeah, shut up. Like, shut that's up. it. Every five minutes. Sometimes fuck I off. go on Do Not Disturb just so I don't get the notification. Or, or I create fake meetings. Yeah, yeah, I exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think that, it, I think maybe it was the only movie <laughs> in Duo Vision, Sean. I think it was the only Duo Vision movie, but there have been other split screen movies. Right. Well, that well, that's why I'm asking specifically about Duo Vision. Like, yeah. this didn't take off. Mm-hmm. Was after it? this movie, and Steven Soderbergh do remember Time Code? Where he had four screens. Oh, did he? I what? think they were all running 
synced to one time code. They all were happening at the oh. same time. Yeah. yeah. You gotta see well, that Soderbergh movie. is a big fan of like split screen transitioning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Soderbergh, yeah. uh, I mean, he's an experimental filmmaker yeah. in a certain yeah. regard, so yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Brian De Palma used a lot of split screen yeah. like yeah. back in mm-hmm. the day. There's a great one in a movie called, uh, is it Rules of Attraction? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that has that it, it eventually it's two screens and they merge at yeah. one point like yeah. seamlessly. With and James it was like, Vanderbeek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That like has that a movie. great uh, split screen. I like that movie. I watched that in a while. Yeah, but this is I mean like a whole movie. Yeah. Done in split screen, so you're actually watching two movies at the same time. So it's a gimmick movie. Which yeah. we've covered oh, a number, a oh, number yes, of gimmick is. type movies Especially from the freak show. It didn't live on. If yeah. Dual vision. Oh, they did that in um, 500 Days of Summer too. It would be like his expectation and his reality were side mm. by side. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But usually not. I mean, they do like a sequence or something, but not like an entire feature film. Right. Right. I mean, right. Yeah. Didn't. Like, it, yeah. Didn't, it would be like. Yeah. Right. Right. Sequences have. Yeah. It'd be even, like it'd the various, Godfather does split screen. Yeah. It'd be various plot points throughout the movie. It'd be like what he expects what actually happened yeah, yeah yeah right here we get there is uh and then eventually they do merge when yeah yeah, yeah. which does happen sometimes in this movie but we get everything when we're showing the split screen we get uh, what's currently happening what happened an hour ago what's currently happening a flashback to From a childhood 20 years ago. what's currently happening fantasy yeah mm-hmm. like, it's currently happening from two perspectives. Or, yeah, organ right. player. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, cut back to the organ player. Yeah, yeah there's a, a, the, the entire score of the movie is from the Phantom of the Opera, the original like 1920s Phantom of the Opera, yeah. performed live uh, by uh, this uh, yeah. woman on an organ that we Except cut to. Except for when Mrs. Carradine is dancing to Swan Lake. And when yep. the band, who in the, the Leaves of Grass? Yeah, what was his name? Bill his name? something. Frankie. Bill. Something in it's the a, leaves of grass. It's a great lounge band. Yeah, yep. they're great. True, truly, yes. They're accompanying singer, however. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, the movie is set mm-hmm. in a the entire the entirety of the movie is set in a like a, the Grand a, View Hotel. Yeah, yeah, which would be like a resort hotel yeah. on a beach, and you'd recognize it from some like it hot. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's where yep. they filmed that. Yeah. yeah. I looked Iconic it up. Hotel. It's the mm-hmm. something de Colorado, and I don't know if it has other film credits. Mm. I nice think so. Hotel. I think I've seen it in something else too. I just I know it immediately from something like that. Yeah. Well, actually, just real quick before we get into the movie itself. So um, this movie has become obscure, I believe, because uh, you know. No, I want to hear this. Why do you think it's obscure? Well, because <laughs> they couldn't play it on television oh, uh, right. for years okay. and years and years right i mean it's, it's two screens you couldn't it's put too that high f- tech yeah mm-hmm. so i think well, it said it needed special projection equipment to do an this. anamorphic lens yeah okay it was also one of the first movies in stereophonic sound <gasps> so we have whatever's happening on the right side of the screen coming out of the right channel audio okay. and whatever's happening on the left Coming out of the left I bet channel that audio. That really impressive back then. I know, yeah, because yeah. they were used to oh, yeah, mono was... single screens. I mean, now you've got yeah. two screens. Yeah, this and... probably blew people's minds. <laughs> if they saw it. If they saw it. So yeah. now, friends, we are among the four of the ten people in the world yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> who many. have seen Wicked Wicked, but we're going to tell you listening at home whether or not <laughs> you should track it down. Mm. Um, okay, so yeah, we were saying it, it takes place entirely in a hotel. It mm-hmm. is a murder mystery a slash thriller comedy okay uh, slash camp i don't think it's supposed to be a comedy i don't think so either i think it's supposed to like build the suspense because you see two things happening at once yeah. but it does it ends up work being that very scooby doo yeah you don't think that's intentional no i don't I, I there don't think are I described it as high camp didn't he? In, at least that's when is that, is before that after yeah, yeah, yeah of course, oh, of course yeah. afterwards yeah yeah, yeah. There, that was not intentional. I, mean, I think maybe like the editor watched it and they're the like, editor knew what the he, editor was, was like. I camp. know what this needs to be. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. When they were putting it together, oh, you're saying the director, the director was shooting it know. as like an actual, but yeah. like some of the, you know, a character in one panel will say something to conclude a scene, and then there'll be like an ironic cut to a comedic timing, you know, bit on the yeah. on the le- like. I know you're saying the editor is doing it, but it's mm-hmm. like, wasn't it designed it was that, way? that way? It was shot that way. Yeah. It and is. then there's a Perhaps. scene where our hero and the heroine uh, have sex, which cuts to a montage of fireworks going off, cannon shooting, and finally a thermonuclear detonation that is accurate, intentional. 
Oh, yeah. Yes. That, yeah, yeah, they didn't trip over <laughs> no. these yeah. shots and accidentally add them into the movie. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely intentional. Okay, so a mystery but you never know thriller. At what point in the process of making this movie Did they that, just that go, became intentional? Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. They could have shot it straight and then be like, what do we do here? And I like, the, like, I have an idea. Duo yeah. vision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is why editors are underrated. Oh, they, yeah, they are. They completely set the tone for your movie. An editor it, yeah. can, can save your movie. An editor can destroy your movie. Yeah. Yes. So I guess I haven't editor ever heard can from... editor the comedy uh, in your movie yeah. when yes. it's necessary. Because I never heard from Richard Bear if he intended it that way. So maybe you're right. Maybe the editor who Did I suppose write we should... No, I... Uh, I'm sure he's findable. My due diligence and, and contact. Is he alive? Don't know. Let's take it against <laughs> <laughs> him. And make sure Find before out. we say anything about the man. Oh, no. I can't. Oh, uh, from, what is, from his, I, I can't believe he is. And I'm just going to guess because all of his. You want to you guess? You want to play that I'm, game? I'm going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna to play that game of chicken. Uh, because all of his credits, like this was one of the on. last things I'm, he I'm did. I'm looking it up. And he did a lot of TV series over the years but like 50s 40s tvs right. like donna okay. reed and all that stuff so oh, i can't if he is alive god bless you sir but um <laughs> no problem. you're safe he died in 2015 <laughs> Woo! There you what go. other I major mean, things did sorry, he sorry. edit hold on this guy hold on what's his name he, this guy has been married five times well well like his Hollywood. list of spouses is longer than most other things on <laughs> look at that shit yeah <laughs> yeah um it just says filmography it doesn't say what he did on it so i can't tell what he what's his name it. Uh, the director? Oh, oh I, I looked this up. Was the no, editor. I looked up the director, oh, Richard oh, okay, L. Barr. Okay, yeah, okay. Bear Barr. We haven't decided Barter. yet. Uh, but he's dead. Don't worry, Sean. So. Okay, no. I will not worry about him. <laughs> yep. Ernesto, I still worry about you. Yep. <laughs> so, it's also a masked killer movie. Yep. In 1973. What, oh, what yep. kind of mask, Sean? Uh, it's made of peanut butter. It's <laughs> a peanut butter face. <laughs> well, it's a, a peanut butter face. Is what it's I would a rubber call. mask. It's a but rubber it mask, like... but it's just like it's the texture of peanut butter, it though. Is. Yeah, it's the texture and color of peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. You just smeared it all over your face. I didn't recognize it as being like a, anything. I mean, it's a Halloween mask yeah. of some type. But I mean, like, what movies or you know, could what... it be like the thing? Like fantastic, like the the the, (laughs) uh, the rock, like kind of clay thing. Yes, okay. I don't know what this is supposed to be. I don't know. I don't know if it's supposed to be anything. I don't. I I mean, I'm seeing a picture of a knife wielding killer with a with a Halloween mask on. It kind of looks like Frodo, but from the animated. Uh, a little bit yeah, lumpy rings, but if they tore all the hair off yeah it's very that. lumpy yeah and very misshapen that looks yeah like a mexican wrestler mask it, it looks this oh is, it could be it, well this one it just looks like mexican yeah uh, i texas mean texas chainsaw massacre yeah this, this is point. not what the character looks like at all but the, no. the <laughs> texas chainsaw massacre wasn't out yet that was the following oh, year yeah. oh yeah. Oh, so, so this movie was ahead of the curve, huh? Oh, fine. Uh, yeah, I'm no, like if you want a mask slasher butter. movie from he's peanut butter face yeah okay so in this movie on two screens, we're desperately trying to follow what's happening. But yeah, I guess yeah. Uh, as Sean was describing, it's like it's not just, you know, covering the same event from two angles. I guess right. that's what su- it is surprised sometimes. me about sometimes it. It gets yeah. there. But sometimes it will do like, here's the inner life of the character that we're watching. <laughs> yep. and it, And sometimes, a lot of times, I think maybe for every character, they show... You know, when the character's having one of those uh, dialogue scenes where they're explaining something about their past to somebody, yeah. the other screen it's is showing, showing you it. a, it's a lie. It, it's like this ironic uh, yeah, thing. Like, all of them have yeah. hidden lives. <laughs> right. It yeah. does. They're, they're explaining their, their past, and it's showing you what actually happened. Yeah. 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 It, it is an interesting mechanic for exposing an unreliable narrator. True. It is. I will say yeah. it is. that, And that's also where the comedy comes from, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. 100%. But, it's you know i actually think i think i can think of a movie that would benefit from this treatment i think in a violent nature could have done this in a way that would have been really interesting you have the one camera just following johnny like the movie is right but then the other camera is following the campers i like that yeah Yeah. Yeah. that's that i would have liked that movie better than i liked in a a violent nature yeah the 13th well that's what's next (laughs) there we go we solved it we're bringing it back but think about think about how all those scenes where he's just walking 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 if in the other side of the screen you had just like the campers like i don't know sitting around the fire talking or something while he's walking and like this movie didn't like it had score because they had her playing the organ but there was a lot of times where that wasn't happening and there was no score because you need to make room for the dialogue Mm -hmm. and the fact that in a violent nature doesn't have a score it already is working towards this kind of 
True. method already yeah. by not having one. And so. it would break up the walking scenes a little bit. More, it would. A little bit better. It would help the pace like. of that movie a lot, I and think. Probably. This movie also has to do that thing where it balances like the sound mix between like, yeah. okay, we're, we're listening to a conversation on the right, and then at a certain point, we're listening to the people over on the left, you know, because mm-hmm. their information, you know, on the other side of the room, they're having a conversation. It's, uh, yeah. you know, integral to the plot. So the, speaking of the plot, what what's going on in Duo Vision? That's a great question. All right. Sorry. In Wicked Wicked. We've, yeah. We've got uh, filmed in Duo Vision. Whatever happened to Baby Jane. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got um, uh, Hawaii Five-0, mm. basically. Um, this feels like a lot of old TV shows. I mean, it makes sense. It just all mixed the together. Director. It kind of does, yeah. 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 Uh, so he uh, he brings that kind of sensibility to this. Um, uh, what else? And Psycho. Psycho. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's that. Yeah. So yeah. there's yeah. there's this hotel that we spoke yeah. of, right? They open on a blonde checking in. Yeah, yeah but immediately the, being spied on because there is a slasher at loose. In the hotel. Mm-hmm. We don't know that yet. At least somebody's spying on them from the ceiling of the lobby. Yeah. Uh, it's a, you know, the formula thing. A woman goes up to her room. Uh, we've already seen that the slasher has, or the killer, we assume, right, has uh, nice. figured out which room that she's um. in and <laughs> goes in there. I think he, like, he wanders through, like, a back uh, door, ends mm-hmm. up in her closet and yeah. attacks her and stabs her to death. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. This starts off the investigation by Rick Stewart, the hotel detective. The now, house dick. So I was like, a hotel has its own detective? I had to look it up. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. This, this just was the in thing. Um, the, Woody Allen, the Woody Allen movie, Midnight to Paris. Um, midnight, hmm. midnight in Paris? Midnight in Paris. Midnight in Paris. Midnight in Paris. Midnight in Paris. I should know this is one of, favorite, my, one of my favorite movies. <laughs> but there is a hotel detective in that movie. What does a hotel... But it's hotel this. cops yeah. and stuff. It's just yeah. security, but just they big. used to just hire cops. How big does the hotel have to be to employ... I mean, employ? This is a, in this that movie, it's like a fancy one. It's like it's like the Four Seasons or the Ritz or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this has a... I was more thinking along the lines of like, you know how... You ever been in a hotel where like the first floor was like a store... Or like a gym and a bunch of other things that aren't necessarily related to the hotel. Mm. I was like, was there a time when detectives just like had an office in like the lobby yeah. of a hotel? It's I'm like, guessing. you know, that's yeah. kind of what it feels like. Yeah. Back in like, because we see later on, like the handyman comes in to like help fix someone's curling iron. They would have like full, they would have hotel doctors too. They'd have full yeah. service in the hotel. Depending on how big it was. And now I feel like it's only like Vegas that has stuff like that now. You know, and that's like really nice like hotels. The nice part of Caesars. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or maybe is that reserved for four star hotels? That I maybe never we're yeah. too yeah. poor. Yeah, we don't know. We're all that's too what poor. I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. In, in hotel doctors and shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going just by like Dick Van Dyke. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. TV like in, in Midnight in Paris, that movie is, takes place in like 2011, and mm-hmm. they're in a really nice hotel in Paris, but they have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most of I believe the uh, hotel cop, it's uh, tracking down people who haven't paid their bill, yeah. lost dogs, lost kids, lost keys, and Small whatever. Theft, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think at one point where that's a joke, right? There, they, they he's telling somebody like, you know. Oh yeah, my life is my day to day is very exciting. And cut to dog and him delivering like a poodle. Dog. Or, yeah, <laughs> to somebody. Sounds Thanks, like a Sarah. nice cushy job to me. I know, right? You, you know? could really, uh, you could really re- remake this story. You know the, you know the house dick who's got it easy because he took the job at the hotel. It's like not much goes on here. I save a dog every mm-hmm. now and again. Find some jewelry that went missing because one of the mm-hmm. fucking custodians stole it. Yeah, and then the murder. So well, is this the next Kenneth Branagh movie? <laughs> uh, it is. All right. yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Kenneth yeah. Branagh remakes Wicky Wicked. Yeah. yeah, it feels like uh, like if Robert Altman would do it, but yeah. unfortunately, yeah, he's passed on. Yeah. So, or uh, Wes Anderson could do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was yeah. It? yeah. Oh, that's definitely yeah. a Wes that would be, thing. For sure. Maybe too quirky. <laughs> too yeah. quirky. He uses Not split for screen me. And, and stuff too, <laughs> doesn't he? Like uh, yeah, Grand he, Budapest he a, and everything. Yeah, he uses he split it. screen. Yeah, yeah. He uses it all the time. I was like, that's totally a Wes Anderson. It would be, I've yeah. watched the hell out of that. Why does a person end up as a uh, hotel detective? Uh, washed up, Callan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the murder of black people for which, for no just, reason for for oh, for no yeah. particular reason, which is yeah. uh, this movie is a culprit of on a couple occasions. Well, he has uh, Rick Stewart 
is uh, is there because he can't be a he was a cop, mm-hmm. right? Right. And he killed an innocent person that he thought was a suspect. Yep. Yeah, and because so, he just barged in and shot a dude. Yeah. yeah. So he's lost his shield, and this is the only work that he can get. Is kind of the idea, the, which uh, sounds the, like the way things should work. Like this sounds like the process worked. Right. Well, yeah. You know? He's like, not yeah. proud of it. Yeah. He's sitting there going, yeah. "Like I killed a guy." But yeah, he yeah. still has a job. He's just not putting the public at risk, so it seems like a good fit for everyone. Yeah. You know, yeah, he's like, what? What, uh, what major threat can happen at a hotel? I, know, I mean, but- if you were a cop, wouldn't you want this job because it's less risk than well, like being out in the field, well, right? Getting, right. Plus, you're the you're the pay is probably a lot less, probably. And- but you're the good the perks. Yeah, yeah. Perks. I mean, yeah. If job. cop movies have taught me anything, they don't want to be chained to a desk. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right? true. They, they want to be out. Yeah. Yeah. they want to be on the streets. Have this cushy <laughs> job, and then like hang out with the the guests. Yeah, hang out with the guests. Guard some bodies. Gonna, he's definitely looking the other way on any sex work happening in this hotel, right? He's oh, just like, I, I didn't see anything. Yeah. yeah, and he's also like, he probably it. takes a cut. Yeah, <laughs> right. He's, he's like, the pimp. I'm only going to take a gram of your cocaine. <laughs> yeah, so I found it. I think he's yeah, actually. I don't think it's a guest that he's shacking up with. It's, it's the, the girl uh, that works at the little like mini mart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The newsstand oh, or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So it's the other employees. Yeah. Like, it's so we're supposed to believe that's somehow less shady than hooking up with the guests like the other guy. Uh, who, oh, yeah. Who uh, you recognized from. I've worked at a hotel and I've seen people hook up with guests well, and yeah. hook up with staff. I, I'd say it's both shady. Not sure, but Rick, <laughs> but Rick uh, Stewart, he's he's just hooking up with the. The employees, yeah. but no, the other guy. They, from Greece. Vince Fontaine is on the... Yeah, he's yes. hooking up with the guests. Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah. he's angrily working out at the pool. And yeah. he's, well, he's angrily hooking up with the guests, too. Yeah. The one, she, like, touches his hand, and he's like, I'll meet you in your room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah. On her. he's just constantly on the prowl. But he's always lurking around and always he's listening. He's a huge lurker. He's yeah. Yeah. He's got a good scumbag face. He really yeah. does. He's yeah. a yeah. natural look yeah. to him yeah, the, the producers of Greece saw this and like i found it <laughs> like i found a good <laughs> teen predator yeah <laughs> you look like you'd put aspirin in someone's coat uh, yes <laughs> well all of these people aspirin get uh, yeah. yeah that's a thing what's that mm-hmm. do? oh it's like a it's, it's like a generic roofie Really? I think especially in the fifties, it probably the was. Yeah, of aspirin oh, and weird. coke, it was mm-hmm. like a, it was like a homemade roofie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I had to look it up after watching. Yeah, that was in Greece. That <laughs> is a line in Greece. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I caught the oh, trying to put my... an acid on my coke at the dance. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's so much dark shit in Greece. Dude, if you listen to the dialogue, it's like different yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I got old enough to realize that that was probably problematic, I had to look it up. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I didn't. It took me forever to yeah. put together that the condom broke because I didn't yeah. know what happened during that scene at growing up. Like, yeah. once you start watching that, yep. once you like become an adult, you're like, yep. fuck. This is I dark should, as shit. Why was this my favorite movie when I was 10? Oh, right. <laughs> then they're like, shh, here's a song. Here's a yeah, song. exactly. Well, you didn't know what any of that stuff was when you were 10. So that's I, why no, I no, but like the... I was like, why do they all hate Rizzo? <laughs> well, <laughs> and not shaming. That's yeah, yeah, well, but some of the lyrics are straight up explicit. Yeah. I was like five Pussy years wagon. old singing Pussy Wagon. Yeah. Yes, I was like five five years old singing, yeah, getting, <laughs> you know, they no shit, we'll be getting lots of tit and grease lightning. Yeah. Like all that, like... My parents are just like, they don't know. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> they walk through the kitchen singing. They're like, what did you say? They yeah. literally say Chicksel Cream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I love Grease so much. Yeah. So much. yeah. It's sorry. fucking. What are your it's feelings not... on Grease too, Holly? Don't get started. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. Sorry, we got to get through yeah. a podcast oh, yeah. here. My God. So... <laughs> Let's talk about the movie we did watch. Yeah. Another conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I will have it with anyone. Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, the, the murder, right, of the blonde woman kicks off the investigation. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Rick Stewart is on the case. So he is going to interview all the people who live at the hotel. So who are the the cast of characters that we meet in Possible Suspects? Mrs. Carradine, I think she, one of the most mm-hmm. memorable. She is the... Um, and I know her from something. Right? What, what do I know familiar. her face from? Look it up. She does look familiar. I did look her up. I didn't recognize any of her credits. You didn't, but yeah, I you might. <laughs> she is uh, the supposed, the, like, the old washed-up performer, the actress. She's like, I, I dance. She's the washed-up wannabe. For kings and queens. And, yeah, wannabe because yeah. nothing. I mean, she gives a story later on about what she's done, but then shows again for comedy. Like yeah. the split screen comes into play of what she's telling the young um, Jason yeah. versus what she actually went she's through. Like, which I, was is just the, a I was in the ballet in France, and she's full on stripping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right. But like, really into it. Like, just she's her, like her, singing her, too. Her face, <laughs> is just... but it, and it's not even like. 
because I thought she was going to say I was in the ballet in France and then it would cut to like a nice burlesque club, right? Yeah, no, no, this is like low down, no. dirty, full this, frontal yeah, this strip is a club. Yeah, this skeezy strip club where she, uh, it looks like they probably just let her sing. They're like, well, as long as you take your clothes off, I don't right. give And she's definitely coked out, right? That's what they're oh, implying yeah. with like her eye For movements. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she, but how did she end up at the hotel? She killed her husband. <laughs> <laughs> but see, these are like, these are reveals that I like right. that they do in the split screen kind of thing. Because right. we meet her and we know that like, okay, she lives at the hotel, right? And mm-hmm. she's lived there, there for 22 years. Yep. Yeah. And the management is like, well, this woman has been living here and she's not paying her, her debt, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we're sitting there going like, okay, so what, what is her story? And she eventually explains, you know, that, yeah, I was uh, an actress. We know she, mm-hmm. that's all bullshit. Uh, and then she says, you know, that gives this whole story about how her husband married her and uh, then he died and mm-hmm. left her a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah. But we see the, the actual story like uh, that. Oh, well, she was in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. I love mm. that movie. What's her name? Her name is Madeline Sherwood. Madeline that sounds Sherwood. very familiar. Yeah. Right, familiar. Eventually, Holly's going to get it. She's going to well, be like, this one that from. we all know her from. I love Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. I love Tennessee Williams. But apparently the guy who married her, like, picked her up at a strip club. They got married, and she's like, oh, it was. Now he slaps her around. Yeah, but she Mm -hmm. says it was like every, and then it was all grand as we cut to him slapping her. (laughs) And then. And he fell one night, and then we see And he just had a stroke. Yeah. Yeah. She knocks him with a. The fire fireplace poker. poker. Yeah. Right. And we had to, right. But we, as she's telling the story, we, she got smacked and then we had to redo the smack. Yeah. And we're just like, all right, well, I think we got it off the first one. But, <laughs> but now we're getting more detail home. because we it looked are. like he just dropped dead. But no, she clocked him. No. And she's, um, she describes this whole, her whole performance in this scene where she's describing it. It's, uh, she was Mother Superior in The Flying Nun if you watched that. I okay. didn't know. I've seen that. She's done I've a lot of, t- of she's of done a lot of TV. Most of them are just like one off episodes, but she was in like the entire series. She was probably in every the director every time he directed an episode probably. of television, she was probably in it. Yeah. Probably why. Well, she has a presence. She does, well, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. when she's telling that story, she does have a presence. You do feel sad for her, but I, I enjoyed I enjoyed her performance as this character. Like I think you really yeah. feel it. She embodies this. She it, she plays it very well. She did a ton of TV. So. Ton of TV. Yeah. So yeah, and you know, uh, I'm guessing before all of this. So this is kind of like she used, you know, maybe not at the end of her career, but she probably used. No, that. she started acting in '52. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Damn. Twenty something years later. So yeah. 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 Well, she and yeah. she's also the pigeon lady. There's a pigeon that comes to There's her window every that day. Our, that our young Jason is very jealous of. Uh, young Jason is the electrician who runs about this yeah. hotel, who was uh, you know eventually revealed. I did like that she had like a little tiny like creamer pitcher almost, yeah. and like a dish for to feed the pigeon. I was well, like, yeah, she had like, damn, in it. I need to step up my game for my cats. I like know. you know, like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Jason's like, what's that freeloader doing here? It's like it's a bird, dude. Calm down. <laughs> he's so jealous. He's so of angry. But he's also like weirdly possessive of the hotel. It seems like yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. at the at the beginning of the movie, actually, now that I'm recalling this, we. We start with with Jason out, like enjoying the sunset before he walks in, and there's a doll impaled on a fence right. outside, oh, which does. And he that. looks up, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he, he looks up and is like, "I'll br- I'll put it, bring it to the front desk or whatever." Oh, What's that? Her that. room, that, her room that he was looking up Maybe. to. Maybe I don't. Shadow I'm not dolls. sure. I don't know. I don't remember. But okay, so who who is this Jason? I thought he was looking up to like the room that we end at. Yeah, but he yells up to somebody like, "I'll put, I'll bring it to yeah, the front desk." Yeah, there's dolls in the window or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe it was the room right below that. Maybe, maybe it was yeah. hers. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> but um, so who is who's Jason? Who's he? Jason basically feels like the uh, he's Eric, and this is his mall. <laughs> like, I know, especially at the end when they said the the Phantom of the Hotel, I was like, right. Eric's Revenge! It's yeah. Eric's yeah. Revenge. This is, this is Eric's yeah. Revenge, basically. Yeah. Well, yeah. it has it's like they wanted to be like the Norman Bates. But it's more like it's more like Eric's, Eric's Revenge, Revenge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or Eric's Revenge. Well, I mean, like it does have it. like a heavy, you know. I mean, it's it's the Phantom of the Opera, yeah. but taking place in a well, kind of, yeah, because there's a mm-hmm. singer. It takes place it is. in it's a, Phantom in a of the hotel, Opera, yeah. And he lives in the walls, is what you know how <laughs> mm-hmm. it's yeah. eventually so revealed. Living in the walls, and it takes the music from Phantom of the Opera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, um, I I like horror movies with people living in walls because that's fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it is. You ever hear those stories about like oh, people yeah. are like food just kept disappearing? 
wondering. And then we yeah. found out someone was living in our attic. You they're, know? Yeah, they're like yeah. some Japanese woman has been living here for for sixteen yeah. years. Yeah. Like, like what? last or last year, there was a story about a lady who lived in the um like the front entrance way, but above. Yeah. It. Yeah. In a grocery store? Yeah. yeah. And just lived up there for a couple of years. And they just yeah. come yeah, they, they just come it. down when the store's not open. Yeah. When I so when I worked at Barnes and Noble, we had like a company wide memo go out because they had a situation like that at one of the stores where a guy was living in the drop ceiling of mm. Barnes and Noble and but he had figured out how to go through the drop ceiling to come down into like the employee break room and stuff behind locked doors. Mm. So really big security wow. risk. But they caught him because someone bought a birthday cake for someone's birthday and had it like customized for them and the whole cake went missing and they were like what the fuck so then they yeah they i think they kept the security cameras running in the store all night and caught the guy like coming down from the drop ceiling and Bro. he would wait until the store was closed to do See, that you know, that would just be freaky yeah. going in there the next Creep. day you yeah know, you look and your at the shit's video gone. and you're like yeah. some guy just came down from the drop ceiling yeah. and then you're like right then that's when everyone going, looks wait up. a second is he is he up there? They found like a right whole now? nest of his up. Th- that, yeah, yeah, up that's there. That's the scariest moment of your yeah. career working mm-hmm. at whatever place. This is. Like did he human fashion? Nesting. Did he fashion a nest out of pages? <laughs> no, he had like <laughs> somehow he had like a sleeping bag. He had a gun up there. Oof, he had yeah. all kinds of stuff up there. Yes, but like, and I think if I remember correctly, they recognized him as being like a regular customer. Oh, I'm oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because he never leaves. <laughs> well, and when I used to work at Barnes and Noble, we we would have people come in from the time we open and sit in the comfy chairs reading shit all day until we close. Like it, yeah. that was not unheard of yeah. to have people loiter all day. So yeah. it's literally like, oh, but chairs. he's always been here. Situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like he he's a regular customer. Shows. Does he buy stuff? Does he go over to like the Starbucks with, uh, with what money? The money he's with stolen money. from people. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. He's not going over there to barter. To complete the facade of living there. Okay, so Jason. <laughs> Jason, the young uh, electrician. Yeah. Has been uh Feels like he's there. been raised around this hotel. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, well, we get we, like... We see his childhood and it ain't pretty. So what happened? Uh, who is Jason and what's his... Because uh, it's revealed, I guess, fairly early on that he's the killer. I can't remember. Like the the girl that gets killed at the beginning... All we really see is that he, the guy is wearing a bellhop uniform, yep. right? A red bellhop jacket. Yep. Uh, he attacks and stabs this woman, and then he escapes from the room as guests are coming in by basically putting her body on a serving cart underneath a, 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 a not a blanket. Let me think of the table spread. The- yeah, what the covers? Cover. Yeah, tablecloth. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> and uh, you know, so he goes past them, and nobody gives him a second look. Right, but yeah. I think somewhere in there, he does like appear. Like we're it's like, oh, it's, it's him. Yeah, you know? it's, like it's clearly him. Five minutes in, maybe that we're just like, okay, well, it's him when we see it. Mm-hmm. Because I think the movie starts giving flashbacks of his character. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, why are we seeing this, like, uh, you know, kid being turned over yeah. to the Department of Human Services? Well, yeah, and all yeah. like, this is the killer psychology. It was kind of fun to watch this movie with you guys because you were ver- being verbal, like, what are we watching here? What are we? Doing? And you were putting it together, like, as it was. So I'm like, okay, the movie's working. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, we were seeing, this must be a flashback. Is this like his <laughs> his flashback? Colin, you're like, okay, well, my co hosts aren't stupid. That's good. Well, it means that the movie's put together. You never know. Like, yeah. you know, when it went flashback, you'd get like sepia tone. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. And everything. Well, I mean, when you just randomly cut to a little boy we haven't seen before, like, all right. In a cone head wig. In a cone head wig, yeah. Just, it's got to be a just, fucking flashback. Yeah, the casting for the younger versions of this young jason oh, are. It's, it's and the wigs that kid are just like so bad yeah it's yeah. just not like or somebody like he had a uh, a meltdown and chopped off all his hair yeah it's, yeah it's one of those Something. where yeah well what's his backstory i mean what's uh what do we learn he was in about? foster care a lot yeah, yeah. He got, he got passed from, around a lot from home to home um it sh- did show why he was taken away from his parents i forget I, I can't remember if there was he remember. just hates his mom that's all i remember well he hates his mom because of that scene where yeah. That was his his foster, foster mom. Yeah, was foster it the blonde woman? Yeah, yeah that was she, his foster. This mom. develops his distrust for blonde. Yeah, I would say people, not even just women, but I I, I really I understand not trusting blonde people. Well, there was a. <laughs> Yeah. All right, hold on, everyone. We need to let's dive into this. <laughs> <laughs> because they are, like, what they do you are. Oh, I've people? discussed. My therapist is blonde, so of course I've discussed it with her because <laughs> my therapist is blonde. What did okay. she think? Boy, I <laughs> yeah, told her I was what? like, 
Well, because like I was in high school in the early 2000s where like that was considered the height of uh, of like what you wanted to be as a woman was like tan yeah. and blonde in the like early 2000s, the era of Paris Hilton. And so like, yeah. I'm so far away from say, that. So you just decided to go the opposite I'm, direction. I'm I didn't like, decide. Going, this I'm is how I'm. Pale. She's no. naturally. Like, I no, didn't I decide that the, the, the odds <laughs> of ge- decided, yeah, Sean. <laughs> the odds of genetics picked this for me. I am like, and so it's just, I don't know. And when you have a couple of blo- bad experiences with blue eyed blonde people, you're like, you've had life so fucking easy. Shut the hell up. You know, like, I don't know. I just, I, no, okay. I'm laughing. Right. Yeah. I get some spidey right. sense around blonde yeah. people sometimes. Like, nah, fuck that. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. So, how do we do this with, with? How do we cure this with therapy? The the immersion. Therapy. I have to we go just, to the village of the damned. The blonde, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're with a bunch of blonde people. I have to go to the village of the damned. The ninety five one. I got to go to yeah, that one. You have to. You have to plan and blonde. Bleach his hair. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go to a Halloween party where everyone is either dressed as Barbie and Ken. Hey, Barbie and Ken. From the movie. I, and, yeah, I think Barbie that. actually did good PR for blondes, honestly. I think that was a rebranding for 100%. blondes. So yeah. good for them. Yeah. You know. They I do seem knew. less evil after that. They I do. think yeah. so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. We've learned something yeah. new. I know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, learned something new always yeah. learning about our coach. You guys don't have like a type of person that has like traumatized you and so you're like, I don't trust anybody that looks like that. Well, well jocks. Exactly. Yeah, so, See? You know, See? Anybody with it's a the same thing. Just like, you yeah. fucker. They're like, that's the blonde equivalent. Yeah. Same thing. Like they peaked in high school yes. and you're like, but they're still going to terrorize you. And it's like, huh. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's same, yeah. Yep. Colin, yeah. you got anything? You got not, anything? That, not like that. No, I guess. Uh, yeah. He's like, not like Congratulations, you. Colin. You have no trauma to unpack. Good for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, We're Colin has happy. fair hair. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I probably was the person that everybody doesn't, uh, you know. Yeah. So, well, Colin, you're a ginger, right? Yeah. They there don't have go. souls, well, you have right? No soul. yeah. That explains <laughs> so very much. Explains okay. it. That um, explains a lot. Oh, yeah, it does right. actually. Yeah. So uh, Jason has uh, some issues because I think one of his foster families uh, tries to get him to drink alcohol. Right, you remember this? They poured it into his. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Into his and and they're yeah. laughing at it's him. This, it's this one foster family that terrorizes him. They Was it the same? It's the woman. The same one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, same one. They try it's to get just... him to drink, and then she basically like molests him. Man, yeah. foster the foster system cannot catch a break. Yeah, and it needs better PR. It's she always got, the villain in the movie. Have you noticed that? Like even um, when we did Orphan, Orphan Two, like the social worker was like a villain in those yeah. movies, yeah. and it's like, dude, they're just trying to do their job. Man. Yeah, weren't we like, siding with them? We're just like, no, they're they're just trying to do their job. I right? Mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but this one takes the foster the Extreme. workers out of it. It's yeah. saying it's the, I mean, it's the families. It's, yeah, it's basically families. saying the psychology the of this killer is because he was an unwanted child, right? right. And was abused in in, yeah. in the foster system. Movie. Oh. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Rob Zombie was like, there's my Michael Myers origin story right there. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. If, if he had seen this movie. Mm-hmm. And maybe he has. I maybe mean, who knows? Has. Who knows? I wouldn't be surprised. He's one of the ten. His yeah. Yeah, one of the ten. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Jason now works uh, at the hotel, as you were saying, an, an electrician. He can fix anything. Yeah. But it's also even his... Uh, he, he got his electrician, or yeah, his electrician degree by mail, by mail order college or whatever. <laughs> Which, yeah. okay. And, he's, but he's, and now he's studying. The Phoenix University of the Day. Yeah. Now he's studying chemistry for embalming. Yeah, yeah. Via correspondence. Via correspondence. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, thank you. We will send you your body next week. <laughs> but all the, the, like, the chemicals are going missing because this also comes down to Rick. He's like, you know, yeah. somebody stole a bunch of vinegar, you know, yeah. and like, who took it and where'd it go? And so, like, eventually. Someone stole 20 pounds of salt. <laughs> yeah. What would you use it for? Pickling. What are we going to do with um, <laughs> the pickler? So the pickler. Come back to the oh pickler. no, the pickler! <laughs> <laughs> so we are setting up this whole thing that like there's embalming going on, the killers, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. these girls have gone missing. Mm-hmm. Um, the old guy who works with uh, Jason um, is a, is a is an architectural historian, right? At least of this hotel. <laughs> yeah, he's we get got a tour. Over. Yeah. yeah, very technical tour of this hotel. Well, I mean, that late makes in the sense, movie. though. That like the electrician maintenance guy who's been there like he his would. entire life, he would know the history of he the would, building. He would, but he yeah. gets, he's got he the can, plans. He, can, he conveys know? it like uh, yeah. like like a tour. I wonder if that was he's like true. Of of some of it was maybe true about the hotel. I don't know, but it's like maybe, yeah, maybe, in the fifties they tried to build a new, you know, whatever. 
the architect was going to build like a roof garden. Then yeah, they just and they decided it wasn't going to support anybody, so they cut it up, turn it into rooms. There's also those gaps in the walls where things used to be. It's setting up that there are hidden places within this hotel for you to travel through. Now, did I miss the part? Another reason why I think that Eric and Eric's yes because he's. Cause they establish the that Mrs. Carradine is running out of money, and she needs yes. to tell she needs to um, uh, pay your bill. Yeah, and then eventually Jason gives her money for the bill. He sympathizes with her. Did I miss when he gave her money? No, he, he slid it under the door. Yeah, it was in, it was in the right side. He collects. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, must have been, I must have been watching the left. Yeah, we did make. We, yeah, we did make a, a deal. Colin and I were going to be watching the left. Holly and McKinnell be watching the right. I'm and sorry, we were, that's our, and we would report back. Right, yes, yeah. This is us feeling. Compare good. notes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, no, but he, yeah. Has, we made sure to make each other aware. He's got knives out. <laughs> She's taking her clothes he off. He caressed <laughs> knives yeah. for a long time. Yeah. He does. He's very proud of those knives. Um, but yeah, no, the old guys. It's like don't don't forget your pay envelope. And then, as he's talking to her, she when she relays the her history and yeah. how that she might have to leave, but she doesn't want to. Yeah, he, he takes out some money and then shoves it under her door. And oh, is okay. the idea okay. that these two have been in the hotel the longest? Like they know each other. It seems like Jason yeah. and Mrs. Carradine. Yeah, yeah. They're like the longest residents mm-hmm. of the hotel. Maybe not. I don't know. They've gotten to know each other over the last two years that he's been working. Well, she's working definitely there, been else. the longest. She's been yes. there twenty two years. Yeah. Yes. But it's also setting up, I think, like a Norman Bates kind of thing, yes. right? Where mm-hmm. he's the monster who doesn't, you know, present as a monster. Yeah. But underneath, there's the psychology that we're showing in, in the left side panel that, mm-hmm. you know, fills in why he's this crazy person. Yeah. Um, all right. So into this stew of suspects and uh, and hot hot beds and and, mm-hmm. and and all this intrigue comes your words the star them. singer star. attraction for the hotel and this is the How'd actress you feel about her, Holly? Tiffany Balling she wasn't good John she is <sighs> from Kingdom of the Spiders and I will have you know a singer Give me hammer nails yep but she's a <laughs> singer and is she? Apparently, she had a recording career that didn't really take off. I wonder what, why. She wait. According to IMDb, she only took this to like I want to sing. Yeah, because this provides me an opportunity to sing. That was her primary reason, motivation. So because that's why she of gets that, two full performances plus a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Two she's full, full on stage performances because she's like the she's nightclub sing, act. She's singing. Right? She just doesn't know how to sing along with a band. The band is was doing what, the. This is what all lounge singing is like on this level. I I don't kind of shitty, I, I th- but I think some of it's good. Yeah, I think some right, of it's at right. least sometimes it works. She's just not doing it right. I think if you're not gonna if you're not gonna hit the notes and hit the timing right, you need to have charisma and be kind of charming about yeah. it. And she has neither. She can't hit the t- like she's off the band. There's something weird about for, it. I've off. always felt that. Yeah. You can listen to the song and just Google, you know, the YouTube Wicked Wicked. Yeah. It's jazz, man. Title, yeah. Yeah. It's just wicked to Wicked. It's about the notes there. you don't hear. Right. Yeah, yeah, that fucking yeah. bullshit. You don't hear a lot. No, no. no. But it just seems off time or it's something. It's very off. She has an okay voice, a nice voice, but, you know, yeah, it's just it's kind of I weird. wouldn't go to see it on purpose. No. 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 But, eh, fine. So, apparently she didn't have a recording career. She went into the movies, and then I don't know where she is now. Maybe still doing commentary tracks on the latest blu-ray release of kingdom of the spiders but apparently <laughs> she struck wicked wicked from her resume because it was never played on television nobody saw it so what? nobody recognized her from it except for us <laughs> damn it us. we remember <laughs> tiffany balling from this movie so she is a dark-haired brunette uh singer who comes in and um I think during a rehearsal performance in the lounge, Jason is the uh, spotlight, spotlight operator, operator. Yeah. and he's mesmerized by her. Right. Oh yeah, because of her voice. Right, but then and her stage presence and her charisma. Of <laughs> and then <laughs> just, just melts him with all that. Yeah, and he wanders over and starts talking to. He doesn't talk to her. She talks to him because he just touches her yeah hair. he just walks over and touches her hair like you do yeah when you like someone she's like yeah we became that friends. works right we became friends <laughs> yeah 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 just well he he's so soft. he, 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 he 
You do have soft hair. <laughs> he envisions them like uh, going on like a picnic rendezvous or something out by the rocks. Not just no, not no. Okay, why? Uh, you, uh, you put more into it than they did. They sit on rocks together and stare <laughs> in off his into fantasies. the yeah. She's That's it. staring off. He's yeah. staring at her. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. In his work uniform, as Michaela pointed out. Yeah. yeah. In his fantasies, he's, he's in his work, work uniform yes. always in that work onesie. It's yeah. That fun. like yeah. maintenance outfit. Yeah. 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 But more surprising revelations are uh, ahead of us because it turns out that what's her name, her character in the movie? Uh, Fair question. Don't did anyone even say it? Yeah, yeah they say it. Sarah? Oh, nope. Lisa. Right. Lisa. Lisa something. Is it? I'll Lisa? Look it up. Otherwise, we're gonna Kelly? go with Tiffany because that's <laughs> that's a real name. A real name. What the fuck is her name? Uh, Dolores? No, wait, no, I went the other way. Lisa, Lisa James. Okay, yeah, she's Lisa, Lisa James, James, the famous singer Lisa okay. James. Tiffany Bowen. So, Lisa, James. Um, Lisa goes to dinner with her manager in the lounge and looks across and she sees Rick Stewart and there's like, oh no, he's here. He mm -hmm. comes over right. and then it's not revealed, I think, right then, but they clearly know each other. <laughs> But a oh, flashback yeah. explains that that's actually her husband or ex-husband yeah. or the fact her manager says, you know, your singing career is taken off, but you're married and that's not good for, you know, singing career. You're going to travel around and all this. So she left him. Mm. And when he was a cop and now it's like, what are you doing here? Like, well, you know, I accidentally killed a guy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, 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 and it's brought up and dealt with. Now, to say that this cut because uh, he mentioned like yeah I, uh, well you know I had an accident and then it just immediately cuts to him bursting through a door and shooting a dude yeah. and then immediately cuts away from it yep. yeah. it's the funniest fucking thing and it shouldn't be <laughs> oh, I thought it was the horror of like oh my god no, he no, killed no, somebody no, horror, horror. maybe it's shock I'll shock. say shock yeah you do a lot. You react a, a lot of different ways to shock. It would be funnier. We it'd be funnier if it wasn't racist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it didn't continue to be that. Yeah. Way. The only two black people Not in this movie racist, are racist, but racial. Like, yeah, are, are shot to be murdered. Yeah. yeah, they only exist to be murdered. And yeah, yeah and they're the help in a criminal too. That's not also not or so a mistaken this for is a criminal. Conscious uh, decision on the part of the filmmaker. Yeah. I mean, look at the time when it was made. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's just unfortunate. It yeah. is very unfortunate. So. Aside from that, it is a funny cut. It, <laughs> it is. A, it is yeah. very funny. Very yes. funny. Sh so the, again, shocking. And the plot machinations kick in, right? Because mm -hmm. now we're putting her. Well, uh, because I think she shows up for the actual performance, and she's blonde. And. No. The killer. And I like, felt triggered too, just like the killer. I was, like, <laughs> I was told this lady was a brunette, that we were on the same team, and now she's a ra Plot she's like twist. Okay. Michaela was the killer all along. <laughs> I'm I'm coming She's a class traitor. <laughs> next, <laughs> next week I'm gonna show up at the freak show and I'm gonna look like Creed when he takes the print ink printer and yeah, his hair yeah. black. <laughs> but you're in just to cover my ground with Michaela. <laughs> I don't wanna look too blonde down here. I'm glad I'm not blonde anymore. <laughs> it's different because you're not natural. Okay. You know what I'm well, saying? Like, yeah. it's well, different. And you have dark eyes too. So it's those blonde, helps, blue eyed because yeah. they got the Aryan idealism going I was on. So. Say, Michaela just hates Nazis. I just, <laughs> I understand. Yeah. yeah it's, they, for sure. They are considered exotic. So they're held to a different standard in society. And it's frustrating. And the Dutch mm -hmm. probably yeah. also hates mm -hmm. the Dutch. Mm -hmm. Also, um, Connie folk. And the, the Swedes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, wow, we're just putting everybody on the <laughs> list. Yeah. So she, sorry, uh, everyone. Yeah. So yeah. there becomes like this whole he's going to kill her, right? He's sneaking into her yeah, room. He's like, well, fuck. We had coffee. Now I have to kill you. Yeah, right. Now yeah. we're best friends. Mm -hmm. But uh, Rick is determined to save her. But there is an attempt on her life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the masked <laughs> killer invades her room and tries to stab her, but she has a valise. A what? Mm -hmm. A suitcase, and uh, she uh, stops oh. the the stabbing, yep. mm -hmm. and she's like, "My life is in danger. I got to get out of here." And he's like, "Don't worry, I'm going to solve this. Stay here one more night. We know where you're." I'll guard night. that body. He says yeah, many well, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is funny because we, we said he was going to say knew, that, yeah, and then yeah. he yeah. did we say it. He was yeah. going to go, yeah. and we're like, maybe he'll say. Me. He's like, no, he went for it. Yeah. Like, Give me a bodyguard. Oh, he went, me. went for it many times. But yeah. yeah. Oh. Um. All right, so help me out here. What was the sequence of events? She uh, she's attacked. She's like, I'm leaving this place. Right. Mm -hmm. She's convinced to stay one more night. 
how? Uh, because manager tries and, and is yeah. just like, you'll never work in this town again. Well, and because and your mother's they, a bitch. <laughs> yeah. They convince her that they caught the man. It's Vince Fontaine. Oh, okay. Vince Fontaine. Oh. Yeah. No. That, okay. So that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. There, okay. So, so there's a second scene, uh-huh. right? Where while she's, as soon as she's performing the second night, she's like, I feel like there's somebody out there watching me. So she leaves to go back to her room. Mm. And when Rick's like, you know, I'll, I'll watch you after you. Yep. And so the killer breaks in her room and appears she's in the shower. And as she's leaving the shower, the killer strikes. But it turns out it was the cleaning lady. And he stabs her to death because <clears throat> right. she, uh, uh, Lisa, was over in Rick's room mm-hmm. having a nightcap. Right. And so the body is wheeled out the front door to a crowd of horrified onlookers at right, the hotel right. and the managers, you know, losing his mind this whole time that the publicity is going to kill the hotel. Yep. And that's when we find out yep. that off screen, a whole other movie has happened involving Vic Fontaine. Vince. Vince Fontaine. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I am not as big a Grease fan as I can tell. my co-hosts here. <laughs> Have I seen the movie the whole way through? Maybe not. Wow. In my life. Wow. I think it was never just said never Grease. been a yeah, no. So wow, okay. Sounds like Grease needs to come to the freak show so Colin can watch it in its entirety. <laughs> what <laughs> happened that reason, but to Vic Fontaine? Vince, well, Vince he, Fontaine. He cannonballed out of well, the window. He's revealed to be a criminal himself. Yeah, yeah. because everybody run. has yeah. a secret history yes. in this movie. Yeah. And this so- hotel is like the John Wick Hotel. It attracts all these people <laughs> with criminal baggage. Right. But or no, almost- what's that what's that shitty Charlie Day movie that tanked really hard? Um Hotel Artemis, where it was like, oh, uh, yeah. all the criminals come and get fixed up. Like, that's oh, yeah. that's this hotel. <laughs> yeah. But it is, like, we get into that, and the reveal of of Vince Fontaine's criminal background <laughs> and his apparent, uh, as they try and apprehend him, happens so quickly. Yeah. On the other side of the screen. You're yeah. like, wait, what is happening? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Like, they blow through this so quickly. So it's insane. Like, you know, did you hear about Vince? And then it's just happening on the other screen. Yeah. It's like... Uh, he, he was a criminal. He's wanted for assault and a, a rape and a bunch of other stuff. And, and he's been hitting murder. larceny. He's been hitting hotels right. all up and down the West they're Coast. Like, as they're saying They're that, like, we got a warrant. And they bust through his door. And there's there's no reason. They, they bust through his door. And the next shot is him halfway out. He's already out the window. Through a window. Yeah. <laughs> Defenestration. Like, yeah. Like just through the glass. So yeah. forced. Yeah. But it's like he got sucked out the window. I think, yes, I yeah, think, it have is. you ever seen that? That meme of the guy going out through the window where he just kind of jumps through. Yeah, I think it's that. Is it from this? No, no, no. no. It's it's from the IT crowd. Is Uh, it? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I have seen this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. I think actually uh, his entire exit from the movie is covered by stock footage from other movies. movies, Yeah. Yeah. Because then there's a chase that happens. A chase? No, no. It's him (laughs) cannonballing out a window, and then it shows a door. It looks like a a red toy car going over a cliff and smashing. Uh, Yeah. it. Yes. And he's like, is he uh, we don't dead? We see his face. No, and they didn't they even say he went 100 miles an hour over that hill. Sorry, and then, like, yeah. it's like they are going so out of their way to yeah, cover right. their bases with this. It it's is like, yeah, ridiculous. It's like, whoa, it just happens so quick. It is like 15 seconds. They're like, he gone. Like, it's yeah. but Thank he's God dead. none of us went to the no, bathroom he, he's at this unconscious. point. Oh, right. He isn't dead. Oh, no, yeah, he's yeah. unconscious. They, but they arrested yeah. him and they've pinned the entire murder, everything on him. Right. And they're like, case is closed. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the 70s, that's all you needed to close a case. If the, if the you guy, know? if you were common, like, hey, I need to talk to you, and the guy runs away, <laughs> yeah, 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 you, yeah. Can, yeah. you can charge him and put him away for years just based right. on that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that's why things are the way they are now? Because now cops have to have like evidence and like, <laughs> yeah. and, like reasons, to, and reasons to do things. Where in the 70s, you could just be like, that guy and point at him and like that was it you know like well, i saw him run away yeah yeah. Him yeah 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 it's yeah. yeah. like well we got him off the street for a few weeks we'll yeah. get him we'll get the evidence but there's been lost the right. key yeah. Right. Uh, yeah um so the so so lisa is convinced to perform another night she's still like i'm leaving yeah, the, yeah. she gets convinced to perform another night even though she doesn't feel safe but they're like no the case is closed yeah during this though right yeah, she's upgraded know. to the presidential suite yeah. where teddy roosevelt once uh, where stayed there. he said the mafia couldn't even get to you there and i was yeah. like that okay good. let's not invoke the mafia because we know they could get in there if they yeah. wanted to they right did. like, like some like it hot yeah exactly i'm just like <laughs> 
uh, when he said that, I was like, she's going to die. Like, that's what right. I thought. I was yeah. like, like yeah. yeah. Anytime yeah. any character goes, they'll never find this yeah. place. It's just like, mm-hmm. everyone's dead. They're already there. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> yeah. somewhere around here, and I'm not entirely sure how we got onto it, because I don't remember the request from the detective to the older maintenance man to f- go through the floor plans and see if there's anything weird. Mm-hmm. But that's when we discovered the hidden tunnels and all that stuff in the walls. Yeah. And the detective is like, finds a room that has like, if you bust through the wall, you get, and then there's a whole dumb waiter that's happening. Yeah. And the dumb waiter yeah. comes up in the presidential suite and the killer goes to attack Lisa while she's sleeping. But somehow right. she's aware of this. He stabs something in the bed, but it's a mm-hmm. dummy. Well, they always stab the pillows, yeah. She's actually hiding. They bug the room also. The yeah. guy's listening to the... Yeah, yeah this the, is a whole the thing. The maintenance guy and the cop are listening. Yeah, but he turned it down because she was in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah. this. They missed the, the action, yeah. right? And then they're... Mm-hmm. the uh, Yeah, and so she doesn't get killed, but then... She gets kidnapped, though. She, and taken up the dumbwaiter to the attic space. Because they hide right next to each other on a corner... Yeah. They do. Yes. They're, and they're then, a foot from each other. And then they slowly slither <laughs> into the like, huh? Which he could have just reached the knife around the corner and stabbed her in the stomach Some, and I mean, not something. even like, yeah. but this and guy is not good at what he does. Up so to his attic because he's got another use for it. But there's also another scene that I guess leading to that we need to talk about. Uh, Miss Carradine. Miss Carradine. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the killer hides in her room as mm-hmm. Rick is going door to door looking for her because he knows who he is now. He's like, mm-hmm. I want to talk to that Jason kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, because evidence is led that way. Yeah. And Mrs. Carradine's like, you can, you know, she covers for she him. She covers for him, yeah. Um, until he, she reminds him of her, his mother. Or the of the foster mm-hmm. mother. Mm-hmm. You know? So he strangles her. And we're like, oh no, he killed her too. But no. So the shocking climax of the movie takes place in the attic where or the layer where the lighting is all, you know, gelled. And, it and is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like some reds and greens and purples up there. And what do we find up there? Uh, your standard horror movie body collection. Yeah. At the end of a movie. The His reason blondes. he's the reason he's been stumming, he's been studying chemistry of embalming. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's practicing. Mm-hmm. He's so been keeping all row. the victims, the blondes. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're staged or like around a table. Yeah. They have yeah. apparently been autopsied, or at least they have the stitching marks of yep. an autopsy. Mm-hmm. It seems the neck is the hardest thing to do, he says. Because mm-hmm. he's been seen those. cutting and sewing the okay, whole way through the, the movie. Well, in that scene, he's seen cutting something off screen, and then he has a bloody knife. He wipes it off, and, and then, then cuts he cuts the a leg of yeah. turkey and starts yeah. eating it. Yeah. Now, with if, the if, knife he's been sawing bodies up with. If us mentioning that there's suddenly a turkey in a scene seems just out of nowhere, <laughs> it was. that's what happened in the movie. Yeah, yeah he's like, this he looks just for yanks the turkey off the floor, cuts a leg off, and decides yeah, to eat it. A whole roast turkey. Probably a stole it from one. the kitchen. I mean, I assume Probably. so. <laughs> yes. So. The climax. Um, Mrs. Carradine's not dead. She's just stashed under the guillotine the that guillotine? he keeps right. in the attic. There's a guillotine in the attic? And a spotlight, so yeah. you can put a spotlight yeah, on the yeah. guillotine. I mean, it's like the Alice Cooper but show. It's, it is, it's theatrics. Oh, yes, you got to have your true. guillotine. Um, but a uh, but, uh, disappointing ending for Mrs. Yeah, Carradine. We well, it's it. creepy because it's, she's down there screaming, the old lady that like he seemed to have some affection for. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lisa's, oh, yeah. like, well, he finds She's out like, the, she, yeah, Lisa's not blonde. Lisa's like, we're friends. You're not, you're not going to kill me. You don't kill your friends. And he's like, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then he cuts a cord and she is beheaded. But we Who? cut uh, Mrs. Mrs. Carradine yeah. is beheaded. But we don't see any of it. No. Because I wonder, is this, what is this? Is this PG? I'm looking it's on the back. It's got to be. Because it, it is. It's PG. Yeah. She wore a bathing suit in the shower. Yep. Mrs. Carradine? Uh, no, mm-hmm. the blonde. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, did, we did see uh, Mrs. Carradine's butt. We did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, she's uh, little stripping. Peak. Little peak. Yep. Who knows who that was? But mm-hmm. I mean, whoever it was. Uh, the body yeah. double. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you're right. Curiously modest for Tiffany Bowling. She's in, the, like, you could tell she's wearing, like, a moleskin mm-hmm. body stocking yeah. in the shower. Um,. Because in Kingdom of the Spider. Anyway, so the this is yeah. So um, Mrs. Carradine beheaded, yeah. right? Yep, gone, sad. And that Lee, and then all of a sudden, oh, we Rick, saw the, the. We also see the aftermath of the pigeon. The pigeon also yeah. Yeah. killed the pigeon. He's crucified. The pigeon crucified freaks. The pigeon. Okay, the pigeon freaks out. 
This because is, he's like, that's my person. Yeah he's, right. gonna, that's, yeah, he's watching his mother get killed. Yeah, it's it's, it's basically the that's pigeon, the pigeon's it, horror origin story. As far as right. pigeon acting, the same pigeon from Moonraker. Yeah, the double take. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, <laughs> gotta be yeah, 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 pigeon. Yeah. It's the Moonraker pigeon who, who's doing fantastic acting in this. <laughs> yeah, but we, they just casually pan across the pigeon crucified on the wall. Yeah, yeah just yes. Casually. He's so he's, jealous. He's crazy. Mm-hmm. Crazy homicidal maniac. And foster care made him that way. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. the thesis of this movie. It is, right. I think. Yeah. yeah. And so um, he uh, he ends up, yeah, Rick busts into the attic, having yeah. finally found it. Like, Rick I'm going to kill cop, you. Yeah. Rick like, yeah. from New York, yeah. Who's been investigating the actual murders. Yeah. Like, he's the actual cop. And the maintenance cop. guy who puts the spotlight on... Right. Uh, on Jason. And Jason can't see. Mm-hmm. Turn that light off. Oh, well, he's yeah, got yeah. Tiffany or J- uh, Lisa, Lisa right with a knife to her throat and all that. But she's able to escape. I think well, Rick just goes up there and grabs, yeah. grabs her. Because he's blinded yeah. by the spotlight. Blinded by the light. So they're, he's by a window. <laughs> and <laughs> This is <laughs> insane. <laughs> this cop's negotiating techniques. Weren't we talking about cop yeah, negotiators like, at a certain point? He's like, mm-hmm. yeah, here's he's a like, bad example. Like, hostage negotiators, this. yeah. I got this. Reverse sometimes, psychology. Sometimes if you try work. to reverse, it works on him. Hey, you, why don't you jump out that window? Yeah, you're not going to do it. I think you're yellow. Yeah. I love yeah. it when they're it's, like, you're yellow. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, you don't have the, the most guts. insulting thing ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or what does he call him in Back to the Future? He calls him Yella in the Western one. Yeah. What's he yeah. call him in? Chicken. Chicken. chicken yeah. yeah. He just calls him chicken. Like that. I didn't know it was so devastating. <laughs> yeah. Just stuff. I was like, oh, that's that's you're like, a coward. Like that's his character it. flaw in Back to the Future is yeah. that he can't handle being yeah, called. Can call a coward yeah. Or chicken. And it's like. Yeah. Uh, so uh, challenged uh, this way, uh, Jason <laughs> yeah. goes, won't <laughs> I? I? He's like, you don't think I will? Yeah. <laughs> and leaps to his death because it turns out. Yeah, he floats through the he air. And, oh, I think death. two of the wicked, wicked. That's the take, right? It's, oh, no, I think it's the other one. Again. No, it's wicked, Is it wicked, wicked? Yeah, it slowed oh, yeah. down, like, slowed because down. we it's know. It's like a dream sequence where he's slowly floating towards the Well, it's the like bottom. in, yeah, it's like in the Hitchcock when he's going backwards yes. down the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or if you fall for vertigo, the way yeah, they cut yeah. out. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he falls on the spiky fence that we saw at the very beginning. Yeah. And they cut to it for one second. Yeah. And then immediately cut away from it. Yeah. There and was then, a lot more blood and murder in this movie, and they cut it all out. I, I think so. To make it it's an, a PG rated yeah. movie, mm-hmm. to broaden the audience. Yeah. Uh, so then there's the aftermath. Uh, the It turns out that murder is good for business for the hotel. People yeah, want to visit. Yeah. It's the murder hotel. They're going to do tours. Yeah. As the manager of the tour looks directly at the camera and goes, People. I'll never understand. <laughs> Freeze frame. Yep. TV credits roll. Mm-hmm. And um, oh, but, they, but this is where uh, Lisa and uh, what's his face say goodbye. Yeah, because they're like, like we're yeah. gonna try it again, right? I like, thought about what you said. I right. don't think it'll work. It wouldn't work. Yeah. That's it. That's it. She's like, okay, I'm gonna go tour with my band, and, and she like, takes off. And we're like, oh no, this is so sad. But then the uh, sweet shop girl wanders up. Yeah. She's like, I think I'm working on another toothache. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess he's, I guess he's <laughs> drilling <laughs> today. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 And so Rick and is so... going to be okay after all. We don't have to shed <laughs> a tear. The continuing adventures of Rick in a grand new hotel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's Wicked Wicked. We'll tell you whether or not we uh, would recommend that you search it out and watch it. After these messages. But first, we're going to summon our mailman. His name is Igor to bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He definitely has peanut butter face. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or they can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along at Saturday Night Freak Show on Instagram and threads. Hey, first of all, I want to give a shout out and thank you to Dom Creek. Oh, Dom. Thanks, Dom. Thanks, Thank you. Dom. You're the best. Um, that was a very special message. Uh, uh, so no, a so. nice little surprise video that I shared with the group. Yep. Yes. Thank you, Tom. That was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yes. Uh, no doubt about it. Um, 
So thank you very much. Uh, about tonight's movie, Wicked Wicked, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, Look, I'm sure that even by this time, slasher movie villains were trying not to be repetitive, but a paper mache mask and a waiter's outfit doesn't really strike <laughs> fear in the hearts of anyone. Duo vision sounds like the setup me and my brother had in our first apartment when we couldn't decide between who got to play video games or who got to watch TV. So we put two TVs in the living room. <laughs> yep. Well, you if you've been to my house, you I know like, I, I still have a duo. My husband and I each have a TV in the living room so we can play video games or watch movies at the same time. So, yes. Oh, love. So you yeah. have duo vision. I do have duo vision. In your living room. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, what I need you to do is to play this on both TVs. So oh, yeah. <laughs> quadruple vision. Yes. Oh, my yeah. God. Well, that's, Double duo yeah. vision. Yeah. Uh, Joey Blythe posted the link where you can watch a Wicked Wicked. Oh, uh, my hero. Yeah. What a great <laughs> he fi- public he service. Found it. Uh, last week we watched a movie called I Maxine. You, I wonder if you could put it on both screens, but just one side of the split, so you watch two different movies. In f- like oh, in but the- on f- in full screen for each yeah. one. Ooh, so like you're watching one and Toby's watching. Ah, uh, the there we go. And then we have to then compare really notes at the end. It is like an assignment. <gasps> All right, <laughs> so I like we, this. We I like the this. theory. You will yep. do the, the experiment. Yep. yep. <laughs> Uh, last week we watched Maxine. Straw Dog seventy eight says, "I love Ty West. I love Mia Goth. I love Maxine, and I love the Freak Show." Oh, agreed. Yes. Right. That's yes. a great group to be in. Yes. Uh, Mark Harrison says, I went with my friends to a sold out session. It was the most well behaved audience I've ever experienced. That being said, <laughs> the audience was hysterical after the climax of that alleyway scene. Oh, uh, dude. It, yeah. uh, oh, that uh, uh, audience. Yeah. yeah, it was for. Yeah. Ooh, and yeah. Uh, he uh, says also uh, when Maxine was like, name five actors who got their start in horror. I was like, Kevin Bacon, Kevin Bacon, Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. It was weird. They no didn't mention, mention Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. That would yeah. have been funny. Yeah. Uh, they could have had so many Kevin Bacon jokes in that movie. I know. No didn't. Footloose songs in the entire yeah. movie. Yeah. It's an 80s movie. Not even Footloose adjacent. No. Nope. Something. Steve Carney says, I had no idea Mia Goth was married to Shia LaBeouf. Unfortunately, which, yes. Yeah, they were in uh, Nymphomania. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I forgot about that as well. They have well. a kid. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're still married. Mm-hmm. Are they still married? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. According to uh, Wikipedia, mm-hmm. which I trust with my life. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Um, the week before that, we watched a movie called Blow Up, and Travis Legler says the only time I've ever heard of a blow up like this was in Bruce Campbell's book, where they talked about trying to blow up the film image of the original Evil Dead show so it could be shown in theaters. Huh. We're talking about yeah, the movie Blow Up is about a technical photographic enlargement process that we know as Zoom <laughs> uh, or enhance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Colin. Um, uh, for you, for those of you who didn't listen to the episode, uh, right, what's right. next? Writes in and says, "Great movie, really enjoyed it." Blowout just made one of the top 100 must see movies in uh, list in uh, Time Magazine. Blowout blow or blow, blow up? He, well, he said blowout. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll it's have a different to movie. look at the list, yeah, but, but it inspired is, yeah, by yeah, blowout. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. De Palma. That's yeah, not what we watch, but linked in a way. Movie Nut Seven Ten said, "Thank you, folks, for this. For it's a time capsule. For its time capsule value alone, mm-hmm. this film is solid gold. It was great to hear such an in-depth discussion. I often drive around my small town with the soundtrack blaring. I don't think anyone has a clue what it is. Have a great day, and please keep up the podcast. I love oh, yeah. that. That's I hilarious. love when you have that obscure movie that you're obsessed with. Who who wrote that in? That was Movie Nut Seven Ten. Thank you, Movie, uh, movie uh, Nut." A yeah. guy in guy in our town that owns a record store messaged me and he was like, "Hey, I've never watched that, but I love the soundtrack." Yeah, uh, maybe it's him. Who yeah. knows? Maybe Skyler, is that you? Mm-hmm. And uh, Bisha uh, Foolery says, "For art's sake, Sean. get Sean a thesaurus already." He couldn't find the right words to express himself if he had a cheat code. <laughs> Great episode, everyone. <laughs> uh, you're you are one hundred percent right. I lack coherent words sometimes well sean's like we should edit that that i did i I was like i listened to it sorry it's out listen we can still still edit it trust me we'll find a way but no yeah i went a little long on that one again i need to uh he was very enthusiastic he loved yeah i didn't know how to express my feelings i was kind of shocked because we don't usually watch sean had big feelings well sometimes that's what's hard about this show is that we're coming right off watching it and you don't have time to marinate yeah i think to process it plus it's like you said we try to hand it actual film criticism at that moment, right? And it was just like, whoa! This there was is a, a time muscle I haven't worked in a while. There was a time when we, f- I first joined the show, that I would take like ten minutes between the movie, go to the bathroom, and write notes, and then come back <laughs> so that I could like collect my thoughts. I get it. I get I it. We've all been that. there. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I stopped me. doing that a long time ago, but. <laughs> 
That's right. I'm probably going into, should. I'm going to this one cold, so I have no idea what's mm. coming out of my mouth. I remember when I first started, I used to take notes while we were watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> I have never. I probably should though, because we forget we things take immediately. Maybe we should take notes. Yeah. yeah. Is that not? But maybe that's what. Maybe we'd ruin it <laughs> at all if we just started taking notes. I feel like married. I. Get, I feel like I started getting better once I stopped taking notes. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm. I'm leaving. I'm relying on you guys to remember the scenes that I've like skipped over. Oh, you yeah. know, you're like, wait, you remember that one scene where I'm like, oh shit. I we think we talk. do a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We fill in the blanks for each other. Yep. So um, thank you again, everyone, for writing in. We yes, really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Wicked Wicked, starting with. Holly, Holly. Sean, Sean. You need to go first. What did you think of Wicked Wicked? Um, I thought this movie was a banana sandwich. <laughs> um, I really wish it had gore in it. That would have just sealed the deal and made it just a really good watch. But it is crazy enough that it, it kept me entertained. It kept me guessing and confused as hell for a lot of it. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I, I I like that. It, I like that they do follow the phantom formula, and they don't hang on the like who's the killer for too long mm. because we didn't need that. We it's not that kind of movie. Um. So yeah, I it's. I mean, they they say it's a new film experience, and it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. They're not wrong there. They're not wrong. It's it's stupid. It's real stupid, and it's crazy. Um. But I had fun with it. I had, I had a really good time with it. Oh, I really wish it had more gore. I think that would have just put it right there at the top for, for a fun freak show watch. But I'm going to go ahead and say recommend. Not recommend, recommend. <laughs> but recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? Yes. Called, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really. Sean, what do you think? Not, not a, re- a record, record, record. Um, uh, I'm going to recommend this movie based on the gimmick alone because i think what the movie tries to do and and what comes across and just that split screen gimmick and uh, the editing of this movie and the that, editing is great it, it's it yeah i, th- it, I think it truly is the organist well we mentioned that she, she played the whole yeah. Yeah. But we didn't talk about how crazy she had crazy eyes oh like, yeah, 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 yeah every time they would cut to this she was a little old lady and they would cut to her at the most random moments and she'd be playing and she'd get this like crazy bug eyed face going <laughs> and it was hilarious. I do wonder about her. Like um, I would, I would wait for it be like, Oh, sure. The organ player again. Like I would just wait for it. Yeah. I wonder Sorry, what, anyway. cause the organ music plays throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I wonder what, uh, motivated their decisions to cut her back in. I was just like, we have nothing for this. Cut I in think the that's what it felt like. That's what it feels like. like they didn't. They, yeah. So they just like, we'll do the sound from this and we'll shoot her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the gimmick is very, um, uh, it, I think it makes you pay attention to the movie. Um, I, you, I, don't, I don't think you can help it. Um, I think the acting, uh, certain characters, like uh, Mrs. Carradine, I like the the actress. I like her performance in this. Um, I'm sorry I'm interrupting you again. Jesus. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I think the organ player was intentional because they show her at the beginning walking on and getting setting up. And then they mm. show her at the end picking up her papers and leaving just like they would have in a silent movie where there's a live organ person playing. But you could have shot that later if you were missing. But I think it was intentional. That's what I'm saying. I think that was from the start because that's how it would have been during the actual silent movie Phantom of the Opera. Mm. You would have seen the organ player come in, set up and then leave again. Right. And she is within the scene, within the uh, sets of the movie. Yeah. At a certain point. Mm -hmm. It's not like she's just right. Yeah. yeah. And then cut in. We do see her. Yeah, so I think it was deliberate. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I interrupted you again. Uh, I've lost all train of thought, sorry. and I'm um, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, again, I'll recommend for the gimmick alone. Um, but there are some uh, unique and interesting performances that are fun to watch. Um, I, yeah, it's just kind of uh, crazy. Again, the guy cannonballs out of a window. Um, uh, the, the we cut to a nuclear blast. Uh, during a sex scene, um, like there, there, there's, it's it's campy, it's something, but it's all you know. If you've ever liked old TV shows, it's also got that vibe to it. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, I think there's a lot of flavor in this movie. I don't know, it's a weird movie, but um, it's unique enough where I think you, yeah, should give it a watch. 
just to be like, yeah, you ever seen like to if you find someone else out in the wild who's seen this movie, like you will have such a connection with that person. <laughs> and, I, and I think that alone uh, and is that refer- possibility is and worth. Please refer to them to our show because we want right, yeah, because <laughs> we're here for you because uh, we've all just experienced this. So yeah, I'll recommend Wicked Wicked. Not a not a hard hard, right? But a, a yeah. but a recommend recommend. Uh, Michaela. What do you think? I I agree. I think a gimmick movie is always worth seeing, whether it is The Beast Must Die Mm -hmm. or even something bigger like A Quiet Place is a gimmick movie. Sorry, guys. It is. I know we have three of them now, but it's a gimmick. (laughs) Hardcore Um, Henry. Hardcore Henry. That is a gimmick. Yep. Um, I would even say maybe even... Like Guns yeah. Akimbo is a little bit of a Guns gimmick Akimbo movie. A yeah. Movie, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that they're always worth watching because it's someone trying to take a risk and that should be rewarded because if we don't have creatives willing to take risks, we get the same shit over and over and yeah. over again. So say buried, I, buried is a gimmick. Buried movie? is. A, oh yeah. yeah. Right. Buried yeah. is one of the best gimmick it's movies. A I think gimmick movie. like that's like I've seen that movie like four times and the, it, it actually still works even if you know what the gimmick is which doesn't always isn't always the case mm. but i mean in a quiet place is making like hundreds of millions of dollars we've got three of these movies now mm-hmm. so um it's always worth seeing how someone's going to experiment with certain constraints right mm-hmm. so um even though like i mean i think when you show me you say it's like 70s tv it feels like old tv shows i think that's exactly right this does mm-hmm. feel like old tv shows but in a way that i find comforting yeah um, very comforting. yeah yeah and it's yeah i definitely think it would be really fun to watch in like a midnight showing type setting yeah. i think a big crowd would get really into especially the way it ends oh my god it's just so <laughs> oh god, insane yeah. um they would be ru- uh, cheering so loud for the pigeon yeah the oh pigeon. yeah <laughs> in a in a very in a pack screening the pigeon would become a hero and the see the pigeon is a weird little detail that doesn't need yeah. to be in the movie but it's in there and it adds texture to this universe that is interesting so i think you got to watch it just cuz it's an interesting like <laughs> It's an interesting thing to observe. Yeah. It's a weird little moment of time. Like someone was trying to capitalize on something and it didn't work. Um, but at least they tried and tried mm-hmm. to do something. And like I said, I think there are movies out there that could actually benefit from this type yeah, of format. Yeah, I wouldn't mind yeah. seeing this again. Yeah. Not all the time, but yeah. if, they, if they tried it, I'd be like, all right, right. interesting. I think it, in a violent nature, you could solve a lot of the problems with that movie by <laughs> yeah. making it a duo vision movie, especially in that third act. When we have that monologue about bears and the it's just their nature bullshit, yeah. oh my god, cut to something else during that scene. It would help. That movie is living rent free in your head. It is. It, that movie, <laughs> because I was so excited for that movie and then it just didn't didn't deliver. But um, yeah, I'm going to recommend it because I think that it's got a lot of interesting things to dissect and, mm-hmm. and unpack. So yeah, I'm going to recommend it. Colin, what'd you think? Well, I'm basing my uh, thoughts off of more the first time that I saw it, right? You know, it's like I kind of went into it knowing that it was a split screen movie, but you're like, what are you getting into? You know, I didn't know anything about it. And so then it's like, okay, so it's a horror movie? You know, there's a masked slasher wandering around through it. I'm like, okay, well, I didn't expect that. But so much Um, And then, you know, it's a detective movie. It does kind of feel like um, the actor uh, who plays Rick is uh, David Bailey. Yes. Right? He feels like if you couldn't have cast, you know, somebody else in Hawaii Five-0 or Magnum PI, like this guy yeah. would have been, you know, it does, I think that's, you know, what we're saying, it has that TV show vibe, Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know? Um, that like smarmy, we wanted Tom Selleck, but we couldn't get him. Yeah, you yeah, get this yeah. guy yeah. instead, you know? Uh, so he kind of, he has that Hollywood persona, you know? So it does feel like a real movie. I guess I was won over by it as I was watching it, you know, I was surprised by th- that the gimmick was doing flashbacks and interior life and fantasies and stuff like that. Not just, you know, two perspectives on the same event. Right. Uh, uh, the editing, I think, as we've all said, it's like it has a comic timing, which I suppose, you know, as you say, now it, it's interpreted as camp. I think at the time it was, you know, it was funny. So it's like <laughs> it's humor. It's just it's never not entertaining, yeah. even though the story that it's telling is not maybe anything groundbreaking. It's like, okay, it's a fairly straightforward 
uh, it's not even a whodunit. It's no. a detective thing, right. but you know, but while the killer is doing his thing at the same time. But I think you have to do that. If you're going to do the gimmick, I think you have to go with a familiar story so you don't throw the audience off completely. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. It decodes okay yeah. when you're when you're watching it. It's like, okay, I understand like what these foreign images yeah. we're seeing, right. how they relate to things. We're like we're giving you Phantom of the Opera, just in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> I like the, um, as it progressed, I, I mean, I did kind of like the musical numbers, because uh, it's like, it's giving you all this stuff, right? You know, and the mystery, uh, the unrequited love story, the slasher, uh, the musical numbers, and then this like grand guignol, like ending with all these dead bodies. I'm like, oh, you actually did go like full horror movie right, they did. at the end of it, you know? And this is before... Um, like Texas Chainsaw, I suppose it would have been inspired by, you know, there's like tons of other stuff in Italian movies that were out at this period of time that did that, like, oh, this is where they found the bodies, you know. Um, ripped from the headlines, right? Ed Gein had already been around, you know, yeah. for years and stuff like that. So um, at some point, didn't somebody say, like, uh, is yeah. he the Zodiac? Do you think he's the Zodiac, yeah. <laughs> you know, which is current. Oh, I did like that. That. <laughs> um, what does it feel like to have your throat cut? Was he the Zodiac? Please tell us your thoughts. Yeah. Um, so I guess it continued to be entertaining, I guess is my, my point. It's like the storytelling, uh, carries you through and, uh, you know, it delivers a movie, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I am, I guess, surprised that no one anywhere has ever heard of it, <laughs> well, but I understand why, I guess if it was out of circulation for so long, it just, you know, it, you can't play it on, on a four by three television during the you know, late night TV right. movies or whatever, because you have to, it's got to be widescreen mm -hmm. and on two panels. I mean, um, on the, on the cover, it's duo vision is the same size as the title of right. The movie. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're like in the new, no glasses. All you need are your eyes. Yeah. It's same for the people who are like, you don't like 3d. Don't worry. You don't need, you don't, you need, don't to need to wear glasses, glasses for this thing. Um, Thank but I really enjoyed it. I guess I, I liked it uh, the first time. This is actually the second time that I saw it. Um, you don't gain anything new on the second <laughs> watch. No, there are but, no revelations. No, there are no revelations. Had. But it was a solid mystery movie that was funny. And uh, I was entertained throughout. And I would recommend that you see it. Uh, as Sean said, for the gimmick alone makes it interesting. Mm -hmm. So yep. uh, I guess that's a universal recommend then for mm -hmm. Gotta wicked, find it wicked. And watch it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is look through the comment section of our uh, posts and, uh, yeah, Internet find Archive. Away. It's it's on there. Or, you know, yeah. Uh, all right. So next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by. John, what are we watching next week for your pick pick? <laughs> My pick pick. Um, M. Night Shyamalan has a movie coming out soon. <gasps> mm. Oh. So let's let's get back into Shyamalan. Okay. We're going to watch Old. Oh, all right, oh, okay. all right, okay. I still have not seen this. I, I haven't know. either. This yeah, is why. Right, when you guys right. mentioned that the other day, I was just yeah. like, all right. We have at least the beach that makes you old. It. Yeah, you so, know. All right. Great one-line pitch for a movie, right? Oh, right yeah. Old beach oh. makes you old. High yeah. concept. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see if it's executed in any coherent is way. Is it oh, Anya Taylor Joy in this? No. No. no? Uh, Who no, is someone famous in this? Right. It's um. Oh God. Shyamalan's in it. Yep, but the the model. Uh, yeah, this Mad was Max like there's some Rona. model in this, right? Yeah. Oh, what's her uh, yeah, name? Yeah, she's in it. The yeah, one that's Abby. Jason Statham? Abby Lee. Yeah, Abby something. Yeah, is it Abby Lee? Abby uh, Lee. What's her name from um, Last Night in Soho? Was in it. Thomas and McKenzie. Thomas and yeah. yeah. Oh, in it. that's right. That's Alex right. Wolf. Alex Wolf. From okay. Hereditary. Yeah, from Hereditary and oh, okay, Quiet okay. Day. Day One. He's. And Beth Davids. Yep. yep. Oh wow. Okay, yep. I'm gonna stop looking. I'm stop looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm stop looking. Gonna, it's, okay. It's, it'll be interesting yeah. to talk okay, about okay, it. Nothing right, else. All right. All right. And I'm one of us, probably Sean, is going to read the graphic novel upon which it is based. Of by course. Next week. Okay. Uh -huh. So that's <laughs> next old next week on Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs> <laughs>